This Nintendo Switch has been on since somewhere around October 8th, 2021, which was the release date of the OLED Nintendo Switch. If you're new to this series, I'll try to catch you up to speed real quick. You see, OLED screens are susceptible to what we call burn-in. Burn-in happens when an image or an on-screen asset stays on screen for a collective extended period of time. Like a HUD or a fingerprint scanner icon or news tickers, or in my case, just a screenshot from The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. When I first wanted to start this experiment, I thought that OLED burn-in was a widespread issue across all OLED screens, especially cheap ones. And with the Nintendo Switch being $350, I thought that this 720p 7-inch OLED screen had to be a cheap one, which means it would be kind of kind of crappy, kind of kind of garbage. However, OLED technology has advanced a lot since the early days of Android phones, which had a lot of burn-in back in the day. You typically don't hear a lot about OLED computer monitors because computers usually have a lot of recurring on-screen assets like a taskbar or a desktop with a background and icons that don't move at all. Except that you do see them a lot in Apple products. They don't really put OLED front and center in the spec lists, but all of the new iPhones all have OLED screens in them. And you almost never hear anything about any burn-in issues with those. I haven't heard anything about those. I'm sure that it exists and people do have burn-in issues, but you don't see it as much as you did way back in the day for sure. In fact, Apple's so confident that things aren't gonna burn in, they now have an alarm clock feature that just leaves your iPhone on all throughout the night. They're just basically giving everybody an OLED burn-in test kit right there for everybody to use. I'm just using Apple as an example. Many other companies also have newer OLED panels that aren't really burning in all that much. My point is that technology has advanced and things aren't as dire as they once were for OLED technology. I've explained what OLED screens are so many times, so I'll try to make it extremely brief. You see, LCD screens were the norm for a while, and those had one big panel of light behind them that was just on all of the time. That's why you can kind of see the light bleeding through these subpixels, even in the black areas. OLED screens now have one light per subpixel, so there's just thousands of little tiny lights in there. Each pixel has red, green, and blue subpixels in them. Those are the little tiny LED lights. When you leave something on screen for too long, those lights that are in use get dimmer and dimmer, which is what burn in is. It's really the burn out of these subpixels. So after two years of the Nintendo Switch being on all the time, this is what it looks like. Can't really tell the difference with the image that's been being burned in this whole time. So let's switch to a static color, like, I don't know, red. Now you can clearly see the burn-in that's occurred. Also, you might see a lot of flickering happen with this screen. That's just an artifact of the video. It's not actually visible with the naked eye. It's just a mismatch between the shutter speed of the camera and the flickering of the LEDs in here. Every LED panel is going to flicker. They just do it at different rates. This OLED panel will flicker at different rates depending on how bright it is. But to the naked eye, you see no flickering at all. In previous videos, it looked kind of like a blur, but at this point, you can clearly identify exactly what assets have burned in from the original image. Showing it on an all red screen showcases the burn in the best because the white lights fire off all three colors of subpixels. And the original image had a lot of blues and greens, and the white is what will burn in just the red the most. But on the flip side, if we switch it to blue or even white, you can clearly see all the red hearts that have burned in from the UI. White also showcases this yellow glow around the most affected area, which I guess is the negative of this blue glow that the bright lights of the Sheikah Temple give off. The whole thing is starting to burn in a lot. We're seeing a lot more detail. It's definitely at a point now where it would be very distracting to play a game like this, but only really on screens that have a lot of red or, or white. I gotta be honest, I played a decent amount of Super Mario Wonder on here and I forgot that it was burned in. I kind of fell into the game, played it for like a really long time before realizing, oh yeah, I'm on the burned in switch. 
But the OLED screen isn't the only potential problem that we have here. Remember, this unit has been on for two years, constantly firing one of the buttons. So I want to test the battery on this thing because it's been charging and in use this whole time. I want to make sure this thing's actually capable of playing a game now. I also have to run you through how this experiment even worked in the first place because you might already know that the Nintendo Switch has to turn the screen off after about five minutes, no matter what. So this thing has to constantly have some sort of user input in it. But before we get into any of that, I wanna tell you about how I've been feeding myself during this two year long experiment. That's right, this video is sponsored by Factor. How's it going? See, I haven't had time to make myself some healthy food over the past two years. I've been too busy staring at this thing for 18,000 hours to make sure that it's still on. Yup, still on. Oh, I got a tick. That's weird. Why does my phone smell like Fritos? Oh, that's right, I'm hungry. Factor's fresh, never frozen meals are ready in just two minutes, so all you have to do is heat and enjoy. You could also be clean eating with Factor. They even have calorie smart meals with around or less than 550 calories per serving. And they've got delicious juices now too. I'm very proud of this 120 frames per second slow-mo shot that I got a one. Ooh, look at that, I wanna drink it. These meals are good for me because a lot of the time, I don't wanna have to think about food. I like to be able to just go over to the fridge and grab a meal out, pop it in the oven for about seven minutes and I'm ready to go. Or if you're in a real hurry, throw it in the microwave for two and a half. And you can try it for yourself over at factor75.com and use the code, you hungry? 50 for a whole 50% off your first Factor box. Okay, so let me walk you through how this experiment even works in the first place. The switch has to dim the screen after five minutes. There are settings that will keep it on and, and not go to sleep for a decent amount of time, but there are no settings to make the screen not dim after five minutes. So a user has to input something. So what I did was I took a screenshot of this area of Breath of the Wild. It's the last thing in this photo album so that now when I press R, nothing happens. Usually L and R swipe through the stuff in the photo album. Then I slotted in some aftermarket Joy-Con that have an auto fire feature. I used to use the Hori split pad and I've since switched to these GameCube style Joy-Con that I think are pretty stupid. I made a video on them once before, but they look pretty nice. They allow the switch to constantly fire the R trigger, which does nothing except keep the switch awake and the screen on at all times. All things considered, this thing is a beast. The aftermarket controllers I've been using have never had an issue. This thing doesn't overheat or anything. The fans still seem to be working. It still draws power just fine. There's no other noticeable issues. Although I will say, for some reason, it's only got 30% battery and I just took it off the charger. This ended up being really not that big of a deal. I found some NeoGAF threads from way back in the day talking about how their battery indicator percentage was a little weird. And it looks like you just restart the console and then everything's fine, which is what I did. And everything ended up being fine after I did that. In a previous video, the last one that I made, I did some thermal tests, which were a little unscientific and didn't produce any notable results. Just playing it for a little now, I can tell that not much has changed in that regard. But what I think might be a more concerning issue that this could have is battery life and battery health. Constantly charging a lithium ion battery is in theory, not good for the battery. So last year I tested it against the OLED switch that I play all my games on. There was no noticeable difference at all. But I should note that I usually leave my personal OLED switch either in the dock most of the time or sometimes in my backpack and let it die, it just dies. So I don't necessarily keep my personal OLED switch in the best battery conditions either, but that's kind of a real world scenario and that's a different scenario than what this OLED switch has been through over the past two years. My personal switch has been mostly in the dock charging while it's either asleep or off. And this thing has been constantly on doing some work with the buttons constantly firing for two whole years. That's very different. 
So this test showed some interesting stuff this time. I only drained the batteries once. I did the same thing that I did last time. I played Smash Brothers with the CPU for hours. Except this time, I forgot to make player one a CPU. So he's just shielding the whole time while getting beat up by the CPU. But I did that on both consoles, so it's fine. The interesting thing here is that the burned in OLED switch, the one that's been on for two years straight, that one outlasted my personal OLED switch by a significant amount. This could just be a fluke. This could be maybe the Hori split pad is drawing more power than those aftermarket GameCube controllers by NY or whatever the hell that company's name is. I'm not too concerned. I think almost five hours of battery life is great. I'm, I'm not going to play the switch for that long off the charger. But that was a very interesting conclusion, something I was not expecting at all. Then I also timed how long it takes to charge both of the consoles, see which one won that race. It turns out they were both exactly the same. They charged from zero to 100% in the exact same time. I actually only caught it charging to 96%, but you get the idea. Side note, Nintendo Switch takes an extremely long time to charge to 100%. What's that about? You know, when I first started this experiment, I thought that it would take like, I don't know, Two weeks tops for this OLED screen to burn in. Two years greatly exceeded my expectations of what this thing would be capable of. I would have expected by now a lot more would have gone wrong with this thing than just the screen. Also, this should go without saying, but this is not a real world scenario that you would ever put your OLED switch through. You're not gonna be this type of power user. You would have to have your OLED switch on for 18,000 hours to achieve this level of, of crappiness. But not just that, the screen would have to be on for 18,000 hours. But not just that, you'd have to constantly be doing an input to keep the screen on for 18,000 hours. But not just that, you'd have to be in a game staring at the same thing for 18,000 hours in order for anything to burn in. And this is at max brightness too. Actually, I had to dim it for the video. This is max brightness. Yeah, it looks, it looks worse in the video. So I think it's safe to say, use your OLED switch however you want. I have a video where I stuck the whole thing in an air fryer, proving that even at extreme temperatures, the switch will probably be just fine. Go ahead, use your switch in extreme heat. Play whatever games you want regardless of on-screen assets for however long you want and charge it whenever you want or don't charge it ever. It turns out the OLED switch is kind of a beast. It can handle whatever you're gonna throw at it. So what do you guys think about the uh, OLED burn-in test? I gotta say this is like the most requested video and it's kind of, it's a little boring for me because I've done this already. Here it is. It's just a little more burned in now, but I get that it's exciting and you guys want to see the progress. So here it is. I stream on twitch.tv slash wolfden all the time, and this is always in the background. So you can always see what the progress looks like on my Twitch. And if you ask nicely, maybe I'll go grab it and show you. Don't, maybe I should have said that. Too many people are going to ask me now. Also, let me know if there's any other experiments I should do on a Switch that's been on for two years straight. Maybe there's something that I'm missing. Maybe I can include it in a YouTube short at some point. You can leave that in the comments below, add me on Twitter or any and all this other social media garbage. Thank you Factor for sponsoring this video. Don't forget to check them out. And of course, the most important thing you can do right here is subscribe. I've been edging towards a million for a long time now. And share this video with a friend, a friend who's too afraid to hurt their $350 toy and doesn't play it enough because they're scared of the old burden. Thank you very much. Have yourself. A very good week. I almost deleted the picture. That would have ruined the whole experiment.